Hi, it's Michael from DNA here, and in the next few minutes you're going to learn how you can use a digital recorder to help improve your experience of taking notes in lectures. Now the device I'm going to be telling you about in this video is the Olympus DM670, which is a recorder that you're very likely to get if you've made a disabled student's allowance application in relation to a university course that you're currently studying on. If you don't have this exact recorder, don't worry, I'll be giving you different options for using different types of technology, maybe even using a phone to record lectures if that's all you have to hand. Now these strategies are useful for all students, but it's particularly worth paying attention here if you've been frustrated in the past by lecture situations as a result of your experience of a specific learning difference such as dyslexia or dyspraxia. The idea with this strategy is that you can reduce the amount that you need to write but still find it very easy to get to the part of the lecture that you want to listen back to without having to fast forward through all the bits of audio that aren't relevant. So let's just think about a few features of the recorder. After you've pressed the orange record button you'll see that there are some additional features available to you while you're recording. Firstly we have these index marks and you create index marks by pressing the F2 button while making a recording. Now the best way to think about these index marks are imagining that they're like rubber stamps that you're printing into the recording as it goes along. So imagine that you're watching a PowerPoint presentation. This means that you could press the button every time the slide changes and that means that it's very easy for you to go back and listen to the slide that you want to listen to by using these index marks to navigate. If there aren't any slides you could just make a numbered list so every time you press the index mark a number will appear on the recorder screen you can write down that number and then a very short phrase identifying why you've made an index mark at that point so for instance you might agree or disagree with something that the lecturer has said or you might have identified something important the lecturer has said you might even be wanting to identify the fact that you found what the lecturer was saying was too dense to concentrate on in the lecture and you might mark that as something that you want to come back and listen to later on when you're at home. And if you haven't got a recorder like the DM670 you can still use your phone. You could use an app that would just make basic recordings and write down the times of when the slides have changed or where key pieces of information were delivered to you by the lecturer. Additionally if you do a search on the App Store for your particular phone you'll probably find that there are a number of apps that you can use to carry out a similar function. So this is a really useful technique for students who might be frustrated with lectures because of their experience of a specific learning difference such as dyslexia. Secondly, you want to be able to omit content which is not relevant to you. So what I'm not saying here is don't record things which you don't find interesting. <laughs> What I'm saying is don't record things that you know you're not going to need that are going to frustrate you when you're trying to find key information later on. For instance, interruptions, the PowerPoint slides not working properly, uh, maybe a very long question posed by another student which while interesting is not relevant to the reason that you are in that lecture and the projects that you're working on. Now what you don't want to do is press the stop button because if you press the stop button that will end the recording completely. So you should only press the stop button at the very end of the lecture. What you should do instead is after you've started a recording using the orange record button you can press it again during a recording to pause it. Now the recording is still active, it's just paused, so you can wait until the interruption is finished and then you can press the record button a third time that will unpause the recording and it will continue recording where you left off giving you one file for the whole lecture. 